How's it going, ladies and gents? It's Jeff Benjamin with I Download Blog. This is Let's Talk Jailbreak, episode number 19. I have my co-host Cody Lee on the line. What's up, Cody? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself, Jeff? I'm doing awesome. Today is, <laughs> today is a great day, so I'm ready to get this uh, show rocking, talking about some jailbreak tweaks, talking about some other stuff. So uh, what, what's new? What's new with you? What's new with me? Um, not a whole lot, actually. It's been kind of a quiet weekend. In a quiet weekend here, same same here, pretty much. Um, just trying to get back into the flow of things. It's it's been a, a rough month, but uh, I think things are finally starting to kind of, you know, get back to normal. So hopefully, starting I heard to go you, back in sync. Right? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get there. I heard you got a? Uh, are you getting a new camera? Um. Yes, I made an impulse buy <laughs> a couple of days ago. For the Canon EOS M, their little mirrorless camera that they introduced last fall, it was on sale on Amazon last week for like $2.99. And yeah. when this thing dropped last fall, I tweeted this out actually last week. When this thing dropped last fall, it was like 800 bucks. Yeah, I remember. So, so my girlfriend and I were kind of like photography, amateur photographers, but you know we're kind of getting into that. So we figured we'd pick it up because it was at such a good deal. Yeah, you gotta let us know maybe next week how how it works out. Um, and so you're still waiting on the UPS dude now. Yes, okay. I've I've raided downstairs twice for false alarms. <laughs> so hopefully the next next one's the real guy. Now, now tell us how you know when he's there. What, what do you do? <laughs> I can hear. I don't know. Just from all the packages I've received over the years, from <laughs> most of them from Apple, you know, iPhones, iPads, MacBooks. I just I've trained my my ears. They just instantly pick <laughs> up the break. You can kind of hear the breaks. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. The <laughs> and I just take off running. I don't even That's ask a lovely questions. Sound. <laughs> I love that sound, man. Yeah, it's kind of like just, Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. Well, um, hopefully, well, if you get the package during the show, then we'll go ahead and grant you a leave. Okay, you awesome. You can uh, go get that package and I'll, maybe I'll do a monologue or something. <laughs> sing, a, <laughs> sing a little something? Maybe, maybe I'll do that. I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. Um, so today, I don't know, this... As far as tweaks are concerned, it's been kind of a slow month. It's been, it's been a slow couple months. <laughs> yeah, but this month it seems to be like wow, it's just it's slow. So uh, we do have some stuff to talk about, uh, obviously, and uh, we're going to talk about those a little bit later. But first and foremost, we have a special topic we want to discuss, and that is the next iPhone. Like, what feature? What is one or perhaps two uh, features that you absolutely? are looking forward to with the new iPhone? Uh, is there something in particular that you just absolutely want? Uh, something you, you hope that's going to be there, but you're not too sure? Or just kind of fill us in on what you think we will see when the new iPhone drops. Okay, so I have two features that I absolutely really want to see, and I have one or two that I'm kind of hoping to see. Uh, the first one, I would say, is a speed bump. Now, I know that's pretty cliche or you know i know that's kind of vanilla compared to Pretty pedestrian what's a, there <laughs> yeah but here's my here's my reasoning behind that it's kind of like the moore's laws in effect when i first got the iphone 5 i thought it was the fastest thing in the world i thought how can you get any faster than that you touch an icon and the app opens instantly yeah. but over the months and that i played with it it's just kind of i don't know it's kind of lost its i don't know if it's lost its speed or if i've used other devices that are faster but it's just starting to seem sluggish you know, when opening now, certain apps or things like that. Okay. Well, with that being said, when's the last time you restored your device? Oh, like uh, two weeks ago. Okay. So it's still, you still find it slow? S still finding it kind of sluggish. Yeah. Now I don't mean to say that it's slow, but it's, I wouldn't mind it being faster if that makes sense. And it's not even just like in opening apps, it's performing other functions that of course I don't have a good example of right now. <laughs> but anyways, I would like to see it get faster, maybe load certain apps faster, if that makes sense. Yeah. So what other devices have you been using to kind of compare? I mean, is this something that has come up because you've used other devices or is it just something you've kind of just noticed? Um, well, it's something I kind of just noticed on my, you know, um, on my own, but I've also, I've used, I've played with all kinds of devices. I've played with Samsung Galaxy S4, I played with the new BlackBerry Z10. I played with uh, one of the new Nokia Verizon handsets. So I, I don't know. I'm not saying that those are any faster, but it's just something that I've noticed. And I mean, I know it's probably a given too. I mean, every iPhone has gotten faster, you know, with each model. Right. But it's something I'm hoping doesn't get ignored this time. Like I hope we don't see another same chip, same speed with just 
you know, other enhancements. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, okay. that's that's just the first one. That's just the first feature. The second one, I guess, makes more sense. Will probably make more sense. But I'm hoping to see all of these camera enhancements that we're hearing about, right? We're hearing, um, in the rumor mill at least, we're hearing that uh, the next iPhone is going to have a dual LED flash, uh, maybe a higher megapixel sensor, maybe a 10 or a 13, and uh, maybe some other cool features like slow motion capture and things like that. Um, yeah. Now, after seeing Nokia, what was it, the 1020 that they unveiled last week that has 41 megapixels or whatever? Overkill. What's up? Overkill. Yeah, that might be overkill, but it shows that people, you know, these handset manufacturers are taking photo, you know, photo taking capabilities seriously. Like the perfect example is when I'm driving down uh, the highway on my way out to the coast and I see beautiful mountains in the distance and I go up to take a picture that nine times out of 10 doesn't turn out very well. I would right. like to have enhanced photo taking capabilities with my iPhone. So I don't know if that's going to take a better sensor, uh, maybe a better implementation of digital zoom. I don't know what needs to happen there, but I would just, I would love to see better pictures taken with my iPhone. Now, does this Nokia camera that you refer to, this Nokia phone that you refer to, is that, how does it look? I mean, is, is there a big lens sticking out the back of it or? No, there's not. I don't know. I don't know what they're using. I don't know what the setup is, but it, there's nothing protruding out the back. Really? It just looks like a large, really large sensor sitting in the back of the phone. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So, so the, I, now one thing that really, and it, obviously it's already been done, but I'm looking forward to the uh, slow motion capabilities. That looks really cool. That does look cool. And you just know, I mean, I know it's already been done. I know Samsung does it with their Galaxy S4 handset, but you just know that with Apple's implementation and the way right. it integ integrates hardware and software, it's going to be really easy and it's going to be fun and easy for you to create slow motion videos. Yes. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. I, I didn't think I would like that at first until I saw uh, an example of what that would look like. And it's, it's really cool. It is cool. And mm -hmm. I, uh, yeah, so those are my two features I'm really, you know, hoping to see. Um, my kind of, you know, I would like to see would be this fingerprint sensor that everybody's been talking oh, about. Oh, man, that's my number one thing. Is it really? Yeah, that's my number one, um, I guess you could say, feature um, request for the new. That that would be a big deal. In it my would opinion. be. It would be a big deal. I can't think of another handset maker that's done this outside of, I think back in the day, comp you remember the compact iPack little handheld yes. PDAs? Yeah. Yes. They, they, they actually they actually used to have little fingerprint sensors in them. Yeah. So but uh but, but this one would be where the home button is according to rumors, right? Right. And I don't think it would be I don't think you'd be able to notice it. And if you could, it, the effects would be minimal. It's not like it would be this ugly sensor sticking out. That's not Apple's way. Right. So it would be integrated in the handset. It would allow you to not only unlock your phone, but perhaps serve as your password for many of your different apps and services. I, man, that would be a huge win for me, I think, and, and for customers as well. Yeah. And that, that's, I mean, how much more secure can you get? I mean, right. it doesn't get any, there's nothing, there's no passcode that you have to worry about, you know, uh, being hacked into. No one can look over your shoulder and steal your, your login information. I mean, granted, they could cut your thumb off and <laughs> use that, but Hopefully that doesn't happen. So this is probably as secure as you can get a uh, right. fingerprint scanner. And it makes it really fast. It, that is, a, if the scanner itself is fast, then it would be effortless to unlock your device. Right. And then, so not only do you not have all these pesky passwords to have to remember, right. but uh, this would be an answer to the growing problem of iDevice thefts, right? Somebody tries to steal your phone. It doesn't work at all. Like it doesn't turn on. It doesn't do anything without your, without your thumbprint. Right. It, it, you can make it at the, like the, the low level of the device. So like you said, it wouldn't do anything. I mean, you couldn't even restore the device without that thumbprint. Right. To the point where thieves would be like, is that a newer iPhone? I'm not, I don't want it. Cause I'm not gonna be able to use it without that guy's thumbprint. Right. Yeah. So that for me would be pretty cool. We, I mean, rumors have been fairly consistent recently. We just had one yesterday that said that these fingerprint sensors were actually causing a delay in the production of the iPhone 5S, but we yeah. just, we haven't seen any concrete proof, right? That's when I'll really bite on, um, is when we see like leak sensors, when 
these parts start trickling through because we haven't seen any yet. Yeah. Hey, I, I, I'm willing to wait. <laughs> that That is a huge feature for me. Now, is there something else that you had in mind? No, that, I think that kind of rounds it out for me. I think we all know kind of what to expect as this is widely expected to be a, a S upgrade, so to speak. So it's going to look very similar to the iPhone 5. And so no just, bigger screen, same screen size. That's what we're expecting. Now, me personally, I'd, I'd like to see a, a little bit bigger screen size, but I don't think we'll see that until next year. Okay. And what about these so-called uh, budget iPhones? You think that's there's something to that or... Um, I do actually, just because look at how consistent the information has been over the last six months. Back in January, reports said, hey, Apple's finally going ahead with budget iPhone plans. It's going to be made of plastic and metal. It's going to resemble the iPod Touch crossed with the iPhone 5. And I mean, over the last five months, we've literally seen part leaks, reports. Everything is kind of mashed up with that original report. So if I if I was a betting man, I would say we'll see those Okay. All See right. those hopefully soon. Hopefully this fall, because I think they would be huge for Apple's revenue game that it's trying to trying to win. So that in in addition to the five S. That in addition in addition to the five S, yeah. We may not see it until next year, but I'm hoping we see it this fall. I think it's gonna right. be big. Now the question is, would you get one? Would I get one? That's tough because uh let's see, price tag has been rumored to be in the three hundred dollar range. And I don't know if I'd be able to justify getting that over a, what is it, a 200 and, well, I guess that's not much more expensive than a, a fifth gen iPod Touch, right? They'll start at what, 280? Somewhere around there. Yeah. Parts. So honestly, if I was looking at buying like maybe a secondary device to try out, you know, hopefully there's a jailbreak for it eventually, but if I was looking to try out jailbreak tweaks or just a backup device, I, I may actually pick one up. Yeah. You know what? Actually, I, I just recently bought an iPod touch the uh, new one i think i think I didn't you I get the was, one without the camera yeah the price dropped on that uh, i'm trying to remember how much 229 229 yeah. without the camera okay yeah that's how much it was 229 16 gigabytes and i actually think it looks this is the best looking ipod touch ever really the cheap one yeah because it doesn't have that protruding camera in the back it has a nice anodized well it's not really i guess it's just straight aluminum on the back. Um, it looks like a MacBook. Right. Sort of. Sort of like a MacBook Air that's kind of squished out. We know, it's interesting. We know people are likening the design that we've seen. You know, we've seen shell leaks and different different plastic shells for this budget iPhone. Um, people are likening it to Johnny Ives' original iMac design, right? With the clear, different colors and the translucent backing. Yeah. So people are thinking it's going to look good and be a big win for like the younger younger crowd. Right, yeah, I, th I think it will, and, and those uh, big win for our pockets, hopefully. As well. we'll <laughs> right, see. yeah. So uh, let's kind of transition over. Let's talk about some tweaks. And I know it's kind of been a slow, um, slow month, but we do have some interesting releases um, for the past week. One of them is uh, Calendar X. This is actually something that was just posted a few minutes ago. This is. <laughs> <laughs> This is interesting. Yeah. Um, honestly, it's really surprising how much work was put into this tweak. This is basically a, a jailbreak widget that lives in Notification Center. It's a standalone calendar app that runs in Notification Center. It does not you know, pull in information from the stock iOS calendar. It is completely self-contained. All the settings are completely self-contained, so it has its own settings panel, if you will. It's just very uh, interesting. Have you been able to look at that? Yeah, I actually, I was just reading, in the middle of reading the post right before we started, uh, right before we started podcasting. I haven't downloaded because from what I can see, it's just a, uh, like you said, it's a standalone tweak. Um, that does not integrate with the stock iOS calendar app or even like even your Google calendar account. And uh, it's not very attractive looking. It's really, like you said, it's it's really ugly. <laughs> yeah, it is it is homely, like a face only a mother could love. It, right. it is just, it's terrible looking. The UI, but, the UI looks like it was designed in early 90s for Windows. Yeah, yeah. it's like a Windows app. Yeah. Basically, we're on Windows like 95 or something. But, you know, like you said, oh, go ahead. 
no, I mean, it's but it's still it's hard not to be impressed with the amount of detail that has gone into this. Like it, all the settings and everything, it's just crazy. That's exactly what I was gonna say. There is you can literally customize everything. I think you can even customize the font. Is that right? Yeah. And it's yeah, on this little so. it's on this cool little turn dial Rotation. or something. Yeah. yeah. I was impressed by that. I thought, man. It's like the guy obviously has some talent here, but it's just the it's UI just poorly, the UI yeah. designer quit or something. <laughs> it was like I try to do the UI UI design or something. Well, it's like uh what I thought is maybe it was just a port. Maybe it's a port from something else and you don't want to yeah. take the time to redo all the image files or something. I don't know. It's yeah. it's interesting. But the thing is the real kicker here is that it's two dollars and ninety nine cents. Yeah. So if if it adds insult to injury with the price, I mean it's already ugly. And I don't mean to be harsh on that. I hate doing that because I know developer. Obviously, this guy worked his butt off to make this thing. And I do acknowledge that, but it is very, very unattractive. Yeah. So when you match that and the fact that it doesn't integrate with the calendar, I don't think you sell it for two ninety nine. I mean, with the right. features, with the features it has, if you had integration and if you had, you know, a better looking UI, I'd say absolutely worth two two ninety nine, no problem. But I think until those things get fixed, I, I'm staying away. Yeah. Me too. Um, so it's Calendar X. It's a two ninety nine on CDS Big Boss Repo. Really, seriously, like guys, if you try this out, please let me know what you think in the comments because I'm interested to hear what you <laughs> have to say. The YouTube comments are brutal anyway, but it's especially brutal with this. Um, so yeah, Calendar X for Notification Center. Check it out. What else we have here? Um, let's talk about Taskmaster. Taskmaster. That's yeah. yeah, that's that one. I think it was also posted today. It's the the spotlight based tweak, right? Where you can right. where it adds all those toggles and different things like that. Why don't you kind of walk us through it a little bit? Well, it's basically you just swipe over once you install the tweak, you uh, swipe over to Spotlight and then Spotlight has all these new features. You know how normally Spotlight's kind of barren when you're not typing a search term? Right. Like there's there's just nothing there. It's a lot of wasted space. Yeah. Well, Taskmaster takes advantage of all that space. It has uh, quick compose shortcuts for a Twitter, Facebook, uh, email, SMS. Have tons of different toggles for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc. You have brightness control, volume controls. You're now playing album art, skip back, uh, pause, all that. You have device information like your IP address. All that's contained within Spotlight. All you do is swipe over. It's pretty cool. Now, my favorite thing actually, and you just kind of touched on it, are the quick compose shortcuts. Yeah, it's like tap to widgets almost. Exactly. So if you want to, you swipe over, and if you want to compose a Facebook message or a Twitter, or I'm sorry, a tweet, it literally, you tap and it's instantly there. I mean, I think right. that's I think that's awesome. Kind of a cool yeah. feature there. Yeah, and it's quickly accessible. All you do is swipe, you know, from uh, what is it, left to right to get to spotlight, and there all, all this stuff is there. Right. Uh, the only problem, though, there is one issue. And that's if you start typing a search term in the uh, search box, then the keyboard pops up and it kind of uh, blocks your view. Kind of covers like up some of those options. Yeah. 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 You can't interface with like, for instance, the quick compose button. It, it just, you have to swipe back over to your normal springboard page, your first page to get rid of the uh, keyboard and then swipe back over in order to, um, you know, to access the <laughs> features there. So that's kind of annoying um, but besides that, it's it's a decent decent tweak. You should definitely check it out. So basically, if you use Spotlight for what it's meant for, you're gonna <laughs> mess up this. You're gonna mess up the yeah. tweak. I have yeah. a question for you. What do all these? Where do all these uh, Spotlight tweaks go in iOS seven when Spotlight turns into just a pull down rather than a separate screen by itself? I don't know. I think it, they can still be there. They just you know kind of pop into view. You think so? Yeah, I thought about that, and I thought, man, these are all just going to go by the wayside. Why? I don't know. Well, it's the same thing. I mean, the only problem is that the keyboard doesn't the keyboard automatically pop up? Yep. In iOS seven, I think so. And like there's you... very little bare space, from what I remember. I don't have my forest in front of me, but from what I remember, mm -hmm. there's very little space. Yeah, there's like space for four by three uh, rows of icons. So twelve icons are there visibly um, when you invoke a uh, spotlight so yeah you're right i think um and the, the problem is is that there's no more blank space the, the icons are there right so i guess technically what they could do is just like make the icons sort of blurred out and then 
but that's still the, the keyboards there. So you're right. I think uh, they're going to have to do some tweaking. Yeah, some serious. Yeah, all the unless they just bring Spotlight back, you know, the original way. I guess they could do that. They can just say, okay, we're going to make Spotlight work like it like it's always worked and sure. get rid of the old iOS seven type. Yeah. So um, interesting tweak. Dollar uh, ninety nine on CDS Big Bell's repo Taskmaster. Yeah, interesting for sure. Now, Instachooser is another tweak that we talked about a little while ago, and it is a uh, jailbreak tweak that works with Instagram. Right. And it, what it, then it let you import videos from your camera roll into yes. the Instagram app to upload. I'm surprised that app doesn't do that by default, honestly. I guess it just wanted people to really create their own content at first to kind of get it up and running, right? Yeah, I can see why it doesn't because... You know, the way Instagram video works and the way Vine works, Instagram basically just took, you know, Vine's idea and <laughs> right and expanded. And with it. Yeah, because you're you're actually shooting like little little bitty clips by, you know, tapping and holding the record button. That way you can get different angles all within the same clip, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that can see why they they didn't want to have a video imported just for that reason alone. Yeah, I mean, because you can import photos from your camera roll and then go to work editing them, but I don't know. I am I can see why they wouldn't want it initially. I can't say that it'll never have that feature, but I can see why it wouldn't. It wasn't there initially, just because, like you said, they want people to create all these fun, creative right. videos. Just a normal video is kind of boring. I mean, it's right. just like, it, it's not, you don't have these different cuts. It's just one long continuous video until the time runs out. But with here with when you create a video within Instagram, yeah. Uh, you can have link, you know, unlimited cuts to make your video interesting, I guess. That's the reason why. But uh some people reported that there's problems with the tweak. I personally have experienced issues with the tweak. Um but some are saying that it works perfectly fine, so your mileage may vary on that. Um it's called InstaChooser. Uh, check it out. How much is that again? Do you do you remember? Yeah, it's ninety nine cents, and I think from I think it was something you said actually that the whole tweet just feels like it was kind of rushed, put together for somebody's personal use, and then just got released to the masses. Yeah, I think I think if you're going to charge a dollar for this, I think it's worth it. But I think it should work work flawlessly. I think you should be able to depend on it. Kind of like I don't know some of the more respected tweaks in the game, like uh, Activator, Ryan Petrick's Activator, or no new stand or, you know, whatever, some of those. I think if you're going to charge money for it, you should work the bugs out. Yeah, I think so too. And and the whole thing about this little pop-up that comes up, <laughs> there's, oh. there's a pop-up. Every time you try to, to import a video, it's like, why you know Caption. capture? Yeah. It's, I don't want to, like, is that a joke? I mean, obviously it's a joke, but it's stupid. Like, um, stop, dude. Maybe, like, is that referring to why didn't you capture it with the Instagram app? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't I mean, know. Obviously, that's because I'm using your tweak. Why are you... Right? I paid a dollar. Quit hitting <laughs> me with pop-ups. <laughs> yeah, that, I don't get that. I guess it was meant to be a joke, but uh, it's not very funny. Okay. Yeah. Um, you want to you wanna do sliders? Sliders. Um, yeah. <laughs> let's, talk about some, let's talk about sliders. This is a, a tweak that allows you to customize the slide to text on your lock screen. So can you give us an example of that, Cody? Um, yeah, like, so, I mean, there's the obvious, the most obvious example is the slide to unlock, you know, slider on your on your lock screen. But there's also a slide to, in it, slide to power down yeah. or a slide to turn off your device. That's another one. There's also a slide to answer. When somebody's right. calling, you can slide the little slider bar and it'll answer the call. So all this text in here, right, that's default, that's standard. Apple writes that, but with this tweak, you are actually able to uh, customize all of that. So like on your lock screen, if you wanted to say slide to get down and boogie, you can do that and slide, it'll show up right there in the slider bar. If, uh, you know, if you want to customize the text in the slide to power down to say, you know, frowny face or something like that, you can do that. So, I mean, it makes it fun for people who like really tinkering with their device. Yeah. And did you mention the slide to like when you receive a tweet or something? You oh, also no, I didn't. You can also customize that. So when you like slide to reply or whatever, you can you can change it up. Also, you can remove the uh, the uh, camera knob on the lock screen too. Okay. 
So that's I mean, all that sliders does. Right. It's it's kind of a good example of what we're seeing lately on the Joe Biden front. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. I feel like we're in this transition period, right? So you have the the top guys, the the more notable developers, they are either holding off for iOS 7 because they know just like we discussed a while ago with the spotlight that there's going to be a lot of adjustments or they're on to other projects and they are not they're not currently working on jailbreak tweaks i don't know if i don't know what to think about that but i know it's been really dry in the last few months yeah and that's i I agree with that but there have been some big releases like from alan yip he's had some great releases of course sure next and the guys uh uh, so there, there's definitely some bright spots here and there, but I, I think like you're like you're saying, overall, it is kind of uh, slow right now. There, um, I think everybody's just kind of waiting to see what iOS seven does, you know? Yeah, yeah, and that's understandable. It seems like it, it's that way every time there's like a beta release, things kind of slow down. Mm, <laughs> they just kind of slow down a little bit, but I, it's going to obviously pick back up. It always does, and um. I know some guys are working on some really cool stuff. So well, yeah, Shernix, Shernix and uh, has that one coming out in the next couple of days, right? That lock screen tweak. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. We previewed it um, uh, a little bit ago, but um, I'm drawing yeah. a blank. What's the name? <laughs> What's the name there? Is it I? Ira. Ira. There we go. Yeah, I couldn't think of that for some reason. Great tweak, and he's those guys have super refined. Um, that tweaks and I have the final build, I believe. And, um, I've been playing around with it. I really like it and we'll have a full review in the next couple of days. Yeah. I'm looking tuned. I'm looking forward to that one. Another thing worth noting is there is not currently a jailbreak out for the latest version of iOS. So that's something to think about. Think of all the people and the developers that updated to iOS seven to try out some of the betas and they're not currently on a jailbreak. So I bet that's another reason why things have kind of been quiet lately. Yeah, and that's that's not even like a tethered jailbreak, right. which is kind of weird. Like, you know, I, I did something stupid. Like, I got an iPhone four, and um, I went ahead and updated it to iOS seven. It was on six point one point two, but for some reason, I just thought that I would be able to jailbreak my uh, iPhone four. Hmm. But um, yeah, I can't do that. So just because it's on, just because it has uh, older seven. processor, is that why? No, it's just running seven beta. There's no jailbreak at all. No, I mean, that's why you thought you'd be able to jailbreak it because it was an older device. Right, because it was an A4 device. Yeah. I just figured I could just run Red Snow and I'd be good. But apparently Red Snow needs to be updated. So Right. Uh, I know last time uh, there was a beta, it was updated. Right. I remember doing those tutorials like (laughs) once a week probably, right? Yeah. And this time, it's I don't know, maybe they're just deciding not to do that. Well, it's... it seems like we haven't heard anything out of the Red Snow camp in a while, honestly. Yeah, it's been uh, quiet. Well, I re- yeah, I okay, I remember now because last summer we were update they were updating Red Snow with to work with every beta, and that's not happening this year. Yeah, it's not. I think it has a lot to do with that was supposed to be mainly for developers to test out things and to right. uh, try to yeah. update there was, their there tweaks. was a big controversy when uh, Cydia was released right <laughs> because they what they had done is they had released a uh, you know the jailbreak but Cydia wouldn't be pre-installed right and so there was um, all these problems people were reporting <laughs> problems with tweaks and these developers were going guys we're not, we haven't updated yet we're sorry we're working so on I'm it I'm thinking maybe they're they're <laughs> rethinking their decision to do that and that's that's the reason why we haven't received a uh, a jailbreak for the A4 devices yet. Yeah. It'll work, obviously. Um, I just think there's a decision not to do that right now. So. Yeah, and that's probably, I don't disagree with that. I'm sure that was a big headache for people last summer. Yeah. Hmm. No comment. No okay. Com- <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we have uh, one more tweak to talk about, and that is uh, Keyboard Control Pro. Uh-oh. I don't know and if I've seen this one. This, this is... Do you remember the Quick Brown Fox? Um, uh, no, I don't. Okay, the Quick Brown Fox was a tweak that allows you to do things like uh, auto-insert closing brackets or a closing parentheses or auto-put a, a space after certain symbol characters. It was oh. a pretty neat tweak. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and 
But it had its flaws because it would not, um, when you put like an opening parentheses, it would put the closing parentheses, but then it would place your cursor outside of the parentheses, which kind of made it pointless because you had <laughs> to go in and then you had to go and move your cursor back in the middle to type whatever you wanted in those in that set of parentheses. Right. Well, this now automatically places your cursor in the middle of the, the pair of parentheses. So you can start typing your um, whatever you want to be enclosed in those brackets. So along with that, there's some other things like uh, tapping and holding the uh, at sign will automatically put in your Twitter handle, uh, some autocompletes on email addresses, a lot of little refinements um, over the Quick Brown Fox is called Keyboard Control Pro, and it's the pro version of the Quick Brown Fox. Okay, so and it's it's, my, it's I'm sorry, real like ahead. it's like power users, right? Are really gonna yeah, like all these yeah. keyboard shortcuts? I'd say so. Um, I I definitely say even the Quick Brown Fox, I would say that's power users. Um, but this one takes it a step further. Thing is, though, it is $1.99, so you got to kind of determine whether or not the extra fixes and features are worth it or not. Quick yeah. Brown Fox is free. This one, this one is $1.99. On City is a big boss repo. Hmm. What do you think about that one? you like that one, Jeff? I do. I do like it. Is that, um, is that something you'll keep installed? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, right? You go through, because even me... I don't review tweaks near as much as you do, but I'll build up 20 or 25 of them in my settings, looking at them going, I got to get rid of some of these. So I'm, it's hard to hold on to one, even if you like it. Right. Yeah. I, um, that, I mean, it's cool. I just don't use enough. I don't use parentheses or brackets that often right. in order. And I know there's other things like, I, I do like the ability to auto put your Twitter handle in um, with holding the at sign and uh, some other things. But uh, just not, just not using it enough to warrant having it installed. No, oh, well that makes yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So um, again, Keyboard Control Pro, ninety nine cents. Oops, maybe a dollar ninety nine. Sorry about that. Dollar ninety nine on Cydia's Big Boss Repo. So that about wraps it up for the uh, tweaks of the week. I think so. I think we talked about every single one of them. <laughs> yeah. So. Sebastian is still out of town. Yep, still in France. <laughs> still in France. I think he's enjoying himself. Oh, Have you talk to him? Um, here and there. Yeah, here and there, just about stuff going on with the site and stuff like that. But yeah, I can't imagine having a bad time in France right now. <laughs> yeah, he's probably got his feet kicked up on the table and relaxing, eating French bread and <laughs> drinking his fine wine. <laughs> uh, I'm, I do a terrible, terrible French accent. And, <laughs> It's kind of compounds it, yeah. Oh man, he's gonna have. Gonna laugh when Sebastian, if you're listening, I no disrespect. We love French people. No, I love, I love me some good old. Well, um, you went. You said you went, right? You've been. To yeah, France. I went uh, back in Feb February, something like that. I loved it. It was. I would move to uh, Paris, man. A lot of people say that. A lot of people say it's just like such it's another nice. world. It's so peaceful. You just could live I love there. It. Yeah, man. They get such a bad rep. I don't know why it is, but like French people, they, they tell me, like I hear people say, oh, French people are rude or whatever. I mean, that's not true. We were treated so well there. Huh. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's, they're super cool, man. Yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to go there sometime. <laughs> yeah. I could definitely um, live there. if it. I think it's pretty expensive. It's really pricey, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Eating like guaranteed. Eating for two, just lunch is going to be 50 bucks, guaranteed. I mean, oh. there's just, I don't know if people consider that expensive. I do. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, that doesn't sound too much worse than my trip to Vegas here recently, but <laughs> I can't imagine doing it every day of your life. Yeah. I mean, it's like, and we're budgeting, you know what I right. mean? It's like, yeah. You're looking for deals, coupon, right. coupon <laughs> yeah, two yeah, for so. 50. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved it, man. It's just, it, there's nothing, like you see the Eiffel Tower and you see it on TV and you see it in magazines and it's like, oh, that's yeah, just the Eiffel Tower. You see the fake Eiffel Towers in Vegas and right. like Kings Island or whatever, but there's really nothing like seeing the real thing. Oh, it's, I bet. It is impressive. Yeah. Even, um, you know, you think it's a tourist thing, but it, it's impressive, man, seeing that thing up close. A, a uh, feat of human ingenuity. Yeah. Yeah. I would it's, just, it's, it's on my to-do list to go check that place out for sure. You guys need to do it. Make it make it a priority. Yeah. 
Yeah. So um, that's pretty much all I have on, on my end. What about you? What, what what else you got going on for the rest of the day? Um, Not much, because honestly, in addition to it being slow in the jailbreak world, it's kind of been slow in the Apple News world. Uh, there's been a few leaks, a few rumors here and there popping up, uh, but uh, nothing, nothing huge. And I don't think we're going to hear anything for the next month or two. You know, the fall is coming, thank goodness. And Apple is expected to unveil a wide range of new I'm products. To that. I am too, yeah. you know, because if it's anything like last year, we're going to, we're going to be working from September straight through December. I mean, they had what, two big events, unveiled countless products and yeah, it should be a good time. But from now until then, I guess we just hang out. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool, though. Is there anything any, anything particular that you've heard in the last week that's kind of got you excited? Or is any any news? It doesn't have to be necessarily uh, iPhone-related, but just anything in the Apple space? Anything in the Apple space? Hmm. I, I am looking to upgrade. I bought a MacBook Pro, uh, the, the Retina model, the 15-inch, last year. Yeah. And I am looking to upgrade it. Believe it or not, really? yeah, I. Uh, did, oh, you didn't get the like the maxed out version, did you? What do you mean? Like, oh no, no, I, no. Some... I didn't. I didn't get. I didn't max out the stats. I actually got the bare one. Oh, okay. Um, and I still see. You know, there was reports that there's some. I don't know. The screen is amazing, but it it takes a lot of power to to run this screen, and I don't feel like sometimes the hardware is able to keep up. It stutters. I'll get some stuttering sometimes. So. I don't know. I would just like to upgrade it to the next version. Um, so are you talking about upgrading just the, like, because... I would get the next... There, what, I would there get, wasn't a new 15-inch release, was there? No, that's... I'm I'm hoping, you know, from what I've read, that we should see one this fall. And oh, I'm, okay. And so, yeah, I'm hoping to pick that up. You know what I think would be cool is if it was black. I think it would look super cool in all black. Um, I wrote about this actually not too long ago because there was some talk about, hey, why haven't we seen a black budget iPhone case? And there was some talk that maybe Apple's moving the color black to its pro line, right? Because we we saw the new Mac Pro at WWDC and it's all black. So that'd be cool if it did that for the MacBook Pro as well. And then maybe we saw a pro version of the iPhone down the road in all black. Yeah, yeah. So if, all right, say Apple does release a new 15-inch MacBook Pro, would you still go for, like, the entry-level one, or would you? Uh, it depends on my finances. <laughs> okay, yeah. It really depends I on if I have I think you should the... save up for, like, the, the max. For, I mean, because this thing screams. Yeah. Like, the maxed-out version. Go ahead and, because it'll last you for four or five years. I'm planning on keeping mine literally for the next five years, if I can. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I think if I took that approach, I would hold on to it for longer. But for some yeah. reason, I just have this impulse to, you know, buy devices, keep them for a year or two, and then sell right. them, sell them off and upgrade. So, yeah, I, I was doing that, and that could be a whole another show on. <laughs> right, um, I can we could talk about that for hours, but you know, there was a, you know, I'm still actually doing it, I guess. Um, Probably on a lower scale. I, yeah. I don't know if I want to continue doing that. I kind of. I don't know. It's like we're just so detached from our devices. And I guess we should be. We shouldn't have like too tight of an attachment. But it would be nice to like hang on to a device for three or four or five years and just be like, you know, make it work for us. Yeah, I know what you're I kind of know what you're talking about. Actually, you it seems like you said something similar when we were talking about putting cases on our iPhones and our and our MacBooks and how some people treat them like they're just loans, like they're temporary. You put them in these plastic cases and you treat them real well and you don't it's take like putting them plastic on your couch, man. Exactly. I mean, what the- <laughs> exactly. And you said that, hey, I don't have cases. I like them being scratched up and showing that they're workhorses. And so yeah. I don't know. I, I, I plan on getting the next version of the of the MacBook Pro. And if I go for the higher version, I'll, I'll probably end up keeping it longer. Yeah. But no, no plastic on a couch, man. No, no plastic, plastic on the couch. couch. What about uh, it? Sound. I was excited for a while about a Retina flavored iPad Mini, but recent recent chatter does not suggest that we're going to see that this year. Yeah, but they also say there's going to be like a bezel free or yeah. almost bezel free, right? To where it's just almost a screen. So I guess that could be cool. But I was really hoping for some sharper resolution because I use the honestly, I use my Mini my uh ipad mini right now more in a week than i did probably a whole month or even longer of my full-size ipad so i was just really hoping they would update the screen on that yeah Uh, that would make it you know 
all bezel would make it significantly smaller. Right. But still have the same screen size. I, I, that would be a hit. Yeah. Seriously. And Retina on top of that, I don't know. Yeah, Retina that's gonna be, be sick uh, on top of that. I don't think we'll see that this year either. I mean, that's that sounds like an engineering marvel. Yeah, just with all those pixels having to... You still want, obviously, 10-hour battery life. Otherwise, Apple right. doesn't get to say this has our great battery life. So Yeah. And I think they, they want to shoot past that now. Now with that new uh, MacBook Air that has... Exactly. What, that was battery. something I should have mentioned when we were talking about iPhone 5S features. I would love the next iPhone. All day battery life. All day or even... Well, it, yeah, it has all day battery life. I was going to say I mean, two day. Because you know what? With yeah. my iPhone 4, I can make it almost through two days. That thing was crazy to me now looking back at it. It, it. I was just really impressed with its with its battery life. And it seems almost like we've gone downhill since then. Yeah, it's it's I'm getting about a day, solid day with my uh, I don't, iPhone. I don't make it through a day with my iPhone. <laughs> and I'm on Wi Fi all day, so I don't know what the deal is, but it's uh yeah. I would like to see a huge improvement in that aspect. I know there hasn't been any huge like battery breakthroughs, but I'm hoping Apple can move some wires around and flip some transistors over or something and make it happen hit that switch over there right <laughs> <laughs> yeah it'll be cool man i'm looking forward to it. we're gonna have a, a very exciting fall coming up so um i'm sure you'll you'll keep us all in the know as you tend to do oh you bet keeping us updated appreciate it man appreciate you hanging with me for a third week yeah it's been it's been a lot of fun i've, I've been enjoying it yeah yeah definitely so i'll probably have you on again well, I won't say that. I mean, it's not like I'm running things <laughs> or anything like that. But we'll have you on again um, next week, I guess. I don't know when yeah. Sebastian comes back. When does he come back? I don't know. Um, a few weeks ago when I talked, it sounded like it was going to be several weeks. So Yeah, I think he's probably going to be until next month. Yeah, so, maybe, so I, uh, maybe I'll be back. Yeah. Hopefully you guys looking are enjoying enjoying what we're doing here. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully everybody's listening in because is uh, getting acclimated to uh, your voice and uh, right. No French <laughs> accent. I won't do. It. I won't do another impression though. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll we'll talk. We'll get together again next week. Same place, same time. Looking forward to it, man. Thank you. All right. Talk to you later. Uh-huh.